Hi ladies, how are y'all doing today? Sorry I'm running a little bit late. I apologize. Um, before we get started, I just want to say Merry Christmas. Um, of course I do plan on doing the next couple of Saturdays um, before then, but um, I just want to thank y'all for watching and, you know, listening and hearing God's Word. And I appreciate y'all and y'all's support and prayers. And um, let us pray. Lord, I just thank you and praise you. I give you all the honor and glory, Lord. And Lord, I ask that you just put me aside, Lord. And now, Lord, I ask that just your word, your truth, your will be spoken here today, Lord. And Lord, I just ask that you just bless all that are listening, Heavenly Father. And I pray for spiritual, mental, and physical healing for all. And I thank you, Jesus, for all that you do and that you've done. All the mighty blessings that you bring out of good and bad situations, Lord. I just thank you and praise you, and I give it all to you. Lord, thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Glad you all are joining us. Let's see. Okay, um, let's get started. Um, my first one is a little, you know, touchy for me around the holidays anyway. Um, but just knowing that God is there for us through it all. Uh, my first uh, article is um, Comfort in Christ. Um, and is written by Melissa Spolestryer. And I believe I pronounced that right. Okay. Scripture Isaiah 42, 3. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who have been wronged. And this is her story. This is Melissa's story. This is not mine. Um... She says, friend to friend, she says, my grandmother made me feel seen as a child. I can still envision her huge grin when any of her grandkids arrived at her home. When she was in her 90s, I took three days off my typical work schedule to fly down and spend time with her. We walked down memory lane during those days, and she shared stories I had never heard about growing up during the Great Depression. I was able to tell her again how her love impacted my life. I can still envision her huge grin. Whoops. Sorry. I lost my spot. Since the next year, we had to cancel our family trip to Texas because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Without any family coming to see her, she began to decline rapidly and ended up passing from this life to the next only a few months into the lockdown. I know she is with Jesus now, but oh, how I miss her. We couldn't gather as family at the time to celebrate her life, and grieving in isolation was challenging. I wanted to be with others who knew the same pain I was experiencing. While none of our grief looks exactly like another's, we can find comfort alongside those who have similar circumstances. When someone can say, I know this kind of pain, it normalizes our suffering so we don't feel totally alone. While we can certainly find support from others, we will discover one who can truly comfort each one of us. No matter the source of our suffering, Jesus came to strengthen and support us. He set us free in a way no one else could because his, his suffering accomplished a restored relationship with our Creator. Isaiah wrote about the future Messiah with these words. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who have been wrong. Isaiah 42, 3. Matthew quoted this in his gospel. In his account of Jesus healing the sick. Matthew 12, 15, 21. He had compassion for those who were suffering. He understands that we are people who often feel like a bruised reed or a candle on the verge of burnout. 
We can find others to console us when we experience brokenness and weariness, but only Jesus can ultimately bring the kind of healing we need. Jesus understands our pain personally. We can find comfort in his love and realize that following him sometimes means following a path of suffering. My son recently updated his prayer request with our family in an app we use on our phones to pray for one another. He wrote several requests, but the last one read, Pray that it would process through these questions. 1. What does it look like for me to suffer for Christ in my life? 2. Where am I running away from suffering for Christ? 3. How can I actively love others by putting their needs first in my life? He added a note that he doesn't want suffering for suffering's sake. Instead, he wants to adjust his view to align with biblical suffering. I share his request with you not to brag about my kid. I have plenty of stories of my children's failures and sins that would knock me right off of any parenting pedestal. I share this because I believe in realignment to the Bible view of suffering is needed in my life and maybe in yours as well. Jesus knows you will suffer, sometimes because you live on a broken planet, other times as a result of your own poor cho choices, and perhaps even because you are a Christ follower. In the midst of it, you can hold on until th unto these truths. Jesus understands pain. Jesus won't crush you in times of brokenness. And Jesus came to bring you freedom through his suffering. We can trust in God's comfort because he sent Jesus as his servant on our behalf. Our suffering doesn't mean, doesn't mean the Lord doesn't love us. Instead of striving to avoid suffering, we can stir our affections for Jesus. We can use the good and the bad in our lives to draw us nearer to him. For the people in Isaiah's day, the Lord told them way ahead of time that he would send a servant to save them. We are privileged to know his name is Jesus and benefit from the progressive revelation that gives us a more developed picture of God's servant. Whether your candle has been burning strong or you have felt like the flickering wick lately, you can worship the Holy One in every season. You can sing even on dark days because Jesus is the servant of the Lord who will not crush you. He will free you. Let his truth sink deep and bring you comfort today. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for being a tender and loving servant. Thank you for coming to bring light and liberty in my life. Give me a biblical view of suffering so I don't have to skewed view of you when I'm feeling broken and on the verge of a burnout. You are my hope when life is dark and difficult. Help me to see you clearly in those times and worship you in the midst of grief. I want to trust your comfort today. In Jesus' name, amen. Something to think of says, Can you think of season of suffering in your life where you found comfort for those who had walked a similar path? How has Jesus comforted you in difficult seasons? Okay, next from our Transform de devotional, <clears throat> I've got God hears, but you know, looking back at the article I just talked about, you know, I look at my seasons of grief, you know, losing my son. Seasons of depression, mental health that wasn't doing really good for a time. Been through many different seasons, and um, a lot of times I did feel alone. Um, wouldn't think that, wasn't thinking that God was there with me all the time. You know, I look back now and see that, and I am so thankful. Um, but I've also got to see the good out of all my seasons. And I appreciate them. I've been blessed. And, you know, our daily walk in this 
this world is just temporary yeah we're gonna see our loved ones again uh, there is a day we'll all be in his heavenly kingdom that's living for him believing in him um, I'm just so thankful to have the Lord in my life and I pray that you choose if you haven't I pray that you choose this day to have him in yours all right, our devotion is God hears. The Lord has heard and paid attention to your affliction. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said to her, Do not weep. And they used the verses Genesis sixteen eleven, and ended it with Luke seven thirteen. Since 10 years had passed since God promised Sarah, well, I'm sorry. I'm actually going to change this up. God's working on my heart here. He wants something different. Um, we're going to do a different one. Y'all bear with me. Alright, Rising Up is actually the one I'm going to read. It says, Let those who love the Lord be like the sun as he rises in his power. Your daughters of day act like it. Walk out into the daylight sober, dressed up in faith, love, and hope of salvation. And that's Judges 5.31 and 1 Thessalonians 5, 5 and 8. It says, if you're looking for a hero, a woman to eliminate, consider Deborah. She was a homemaker, a judge, and a prophet who exuded strength, faith, and positivity. Before the days of kings, God raised up judges to help his people. When we meet Deborah, the Israelites had been oppressed by King Jabin and his army commander, Sisra's 900 chariots for 20 years. Meanwhile, Deborah held court at home. Then one day she sent for Barak. She told him, God had commanded him to go to the Mount Tabor and prepare for battle. Take ten companies of soldiers. I'll take care of getting Sisera, and I'll make sure you win the battle. That's Judges 4, 6 through 7. Barak told her he'd go, but only if she, Deborah, went with him. And all the women of the Bible, Edith Dean writes, that is one of the most unusual passages in the Bible spoken by a man to a woman. It demonstrates a, de a general's confidence in a woman. A homebody, too, who had risen to a high place in Israel largely because of her one quality, her abiding faith in God. Deborah told Barak she'd go with him. But to understand that with an attitude like that, there will be no glory in, in it for you, Judges 4, 9 through 10. Then Deborah took positive action as she rose up, Judges 4, 9, physically and faithfully and went forward with Barak. When they reached their face-off with Sisera and his chariots, Deborah encouraged Barak, saying, Up, for this is the day when the Lord has given Sisera into your hand. It is not the Lord gone out. Is not the Lord gone out before you? Judges 4.14 In the end, God, having confused and terrified Sisera, his chariot drivers and army, brought his people complete and ultimate victory under Deborah's leadership. Peace for the next 40 years. Daughters of the day, don't let negative attitude keep you down. Instead, love God. Feed your faith with his word. And you, like Deborah, will rise up in his light and power. Lord, as a daughter of your great light, I rise up in your power knowing you will give me victory. And it's so good that God gives us the power to rise up. And there's no way to do it but with prayer in his word, worship, fellowship. I love y'all. I thank y'all for listening. Please feel free to share on the site or the King Talk 
the group at any time. I'd love to hear from y'all. Thank y'all for listening, and y'all have a beautiful, blessed weekend. Bye.